Chooch, bringing y'all into the world of the electric unicycle. Dudes, let's go into these things. These are an absolute game changer to the way we commute around the world. Guys, I got into these about seven years ago. Still into it. city commuting, for trail riding, for everything in between. These things are absolutely phenomenal. I wanna bring y'all into the world and just show y'all some clips of it, show you kind of what it's about, and explain to you how I got into it, why I got into it. And then I'll talk about some different models, some you know price ranges, uh, specs, wh what you can expect out of these things. If you're somebody that's completely new to the whole game of these things, we're gonna run down exactly what's going on with it so you can Pit, make the right decision if you're going to be picking up your own wheel or if you're just on the fence about it and you're like what the hell is this hobby even about i'm going to give you all the rundown so you can be up to date yo like dude i see it skateboard all the time. I used to be an avid skateboarder and I literally had a half pipe in the front yard. The whole thing that got me into the unicycles is the weirdest thing in the world guys and a lot of you out there that are looking at this from the outside that may ride motorcycles, that may ride uh, skateboards, that may do anything else you know extreme sport wise you may be looking at this like dude that looks really really dorky and like that does not look cool at all. At 100% dudes, I get where you're coming from and I don't even know what made me wanna fall into this and what made me buy the first one. Um, it was really a strange time. So it was like 2015 guys and I was out cruising around on my skateboard. That's the way I got down to community college at the time. I was like, had to go down there for classes and rain, sleet, shine. That's the way I had to get down there was on that skateboard. And one day it was pouring down rain, guys, and I like was cruising, 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 and a car pulls out right in front of me. And as you know with skateboarding, guys, you can, the way you stop on a skateboard is either you've got a power slide or put your toe down. Man, for like a lot of situations in the city, I just needed some, some brakes. I needed some, some better brakes there. And the thing, like a skateboard just didn't offer that. And that was, I love skateboarding, but going downhill, like, I had a long downhill to go down and I would just get so much speed down that downhill and there was little alleyways and offshoots and in the rain and in the ice, dude, it was just not the best thing to, to work with. And so I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna buy one of those e-scooters. So mind you, this is like 2015. This is like mid 2015 before the whole e-scooter craze took off, before the whole electric rideables and uh, PEVs and all that took off. Um, guys, the pandemic really ended up making all this take off. Like, and being already into it, I didn't realize how much it had taken off during the whole uh, lockdown and whatnot. But it did, man. The numbers shot up like tenfold of the amount of people in this community during the whole uh, lockdowns. Anyways, going back to it, 2015, guys. I just wanted like something that would get me down to class, and I could get home and it had brakes on it. 
I didn't care how fast it went. I just wanted something that could go like four or five miles on a charge and it had brakes on it. And I literally did not care how fast it went. I wanted something I could commute on. And I was scrolling around Amazon, like, and on Amazon at the time, man, like, it's so weird because a lot of stuff, if you go back on your Amazon page and you try to find the stuff, like your old orders, you that stuff literally won't even be there anymore. But lo and behold, Amazon had a Airwheel X3. There's this wheel right up here. I'll grab it over. So this is my first electric unicycle right here. So this right here is nostalgia, guys. This ordered on Amazon in 2015, so about seven years ago. And this started it all, guys. So this is what started everything. Let's see if it, it still works. Still turning on, it works. Probably needs some inflation on the tire. But you can see where we've come from since then. So this is the, this right here would go um, about seven miles on the charge. And you could go maybe about uh, eight miles an hour on it, seven and a half, eight miles an hour. And now this one down here that I have go about 54 miles an hour. And it is sweet and has a full LCD display. All my wheels have custom modifications to them that some people don't like, but I do all this stuff to it that's just kind of ridiculous. And this has a full LCD display on it, one of the first ones with it. And you can go in here and turn your lights on. So it has a sweet headlight on the front right here. And then check this out. I love this. So flashing lights on the side, like a Rigid Industries LED light bar. Really, really cool. This is a very unique wheel right here. The Veteran Sherman, man. When this came out, like with the roll bar on it and everything, it's expensive wheel, guys. This is, I mean, you could get, a uh, nice car for the price of this. I mean, not a nice car, but you know, you can get a used Honda Civic for the price of this thing. And I absolutely understand that, but it's a ton of fun. That is the most unique vehicle in the world right there. You cannot beat it. It is so much fun. It looks so cool. And definitely, like if I had one to run out the door with, people always ask, like if I had one just to grab and go with, of course I'd take this one because it's the most expensive one. <laughs> And it's just, I mean, it's sweet. It's the, you know, the Veteran Sherman I have is sweet and it's the most expensive one I have. And if I just had one, I'd get this one. But the thing is, um, the other ones, I ride the other ones a lot more than that one. Um, just for trail riding, for jumping and stuff like that. Like for this one, you would definitely want to take this one out riding and stuff and jumping because you wouldn't want to damage your expensive one. You see what I'm saying? And so they just have their place um, I really like having multiple wheels so I like that one is the one I like to race for example the EXN just because it uh, it's just the nature of it it's hard to explain it but you just have one you like to race um, that one's really good the um, King Song 16S that one's great for letting friends ride when they come over it's a durable wheel great to learn on that was definitely the first one I had Airwheel X3, B Goat EXN, Veteran Sherman. That's the M Super V3S Plus right there. They don't even make that one anymore. This is the M Super X right here. They don't make this one anymore. Um, this is a really good wheel. This is probably the wheel I have the most miles on. It's, it's, I mean, I still ride it. It's phenomenal. Great wheel. Very lightweight. Love that. Of course, the In Motion V12, but I had it torn apart changing the tire. This one right here, this is probably the wheel that you probably see the most, man. Um, this is the M Super Pro, and the R, the new one is called the, here, I'm turning on this one. The new one of this is called the RST. And this, with this tire, and just with these pedals, man, is just a great setup. It's just a great do-it-all wheel. Uh, it's not too heavy. The shells are cheap to replace. Um, these pedals right here just are, just work great on this wheel. Um, it's not the, the flashiest, but it also isn't the most expensive. You'll go send it on something like this that you paid, you know, two thousand dollars for, as opposed to something like this that you paid four thousand dollars for. And if you can get both, that's great because then there's some days where you want to take this one out, you know, and and go for a long ride and enjoy a long cruise in that great range. 
And there's other days where you just want to go trail ride or go to the bike park. So that's why you end up getting multiple wheels every time. And then other times you want to be able to kind of do both. This is the hybrid wheel, I'd say. Good for long range, good for trail riding, good for everything. That's why the EXN. The EXN is just a great wheel all around. I don't know. I don't know why it's not more popular than it is, but I love that wheel. From this right here, seven, seven miles and seven miles per hour to a hundred miles and 52 miles an hour. And that's the difference in, in models pretty much. Yeah, granted this one's a lot lighter weight and smaller and whatnot, but um, just for example, this EXN right here, this one will go 80 miles on a charge and it'll go about 50 miles an hour. About, yeah. High, 40, high 40s on this one right here. and But the Sherman's the only one that really goes over 50 consecutively. We're on Amazon for that thing, guys, and it just showed up at the door, and I was like, what is this thing, guys? I was like, what in the hell? I was like, how am I going to ride this? I was like, what the, I was like, did I, did I really spend my money on this? Is like what I was thinking when I got it out. And I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get on this thing and ride it. And I figured it out, dude. I figured it out within like 15, 20 minutes or so. And this thing was like, dude, I, I would rather have this, have had this back then than a cell phone. I kept this thing with me everywhere I went and I kept the charger in my bag everywhere I went and just, just rode it all around Denver. I had to go everywhere down there too, man. I had to go all over the place. When I first moved to Denver, I had, um, Dude, I had to be all around the city. And so that thing made it so easy. And I would just carry the charger with me and I would literally find like plug-in ports outside of Starbucks, um, outside the library, where, wherever I needed to. And I'd just charge up and I'd just chill next to it and wait if I needed to. So um, it just shows now when you have all this range over here, you don't even have to worry about it. You'll be good to go for like on this EXN, Living in Denver, you could ride and do all your commutes and everything like that and ride it all week. If you lived, you know, close to work, you know, within a few miles, you could ride it all week and never even charge it and just have it every single day and it'd be ready to go and not even charge it, but like once a week. And that's pretty incredible to see where we've come from since then. It's, um, it's awesome, dude. It's like, it's legit wild. And the fact that you can have something you just plug into a wall outlet and that you can go 100 miles on, that you can keep next to your door, you can take on public transit, you can put in the truck of a car. Heck, dude, even if you don't feel like riding it, you can just call an Uber and put the thing in the trunk of the Uber and go about your way. It just opens up tons of windows. Um, and I think that's the thing that did it for me, man. I'm, I'm a person, I really don't care too much about um, what I look like, anything like that. I just, you know, I care about convenience. I care about how quickly I can get around. Um, you know, if they made Puffs the Magic School Bus and I could go buy it off the lot right now, I'd go buy it. Because I, I simply would just like the, to be able to time travel into thing, And I wouldn't care about, give a damn about what I look like in it. I don't care if I was ri driving the school bus. But the whole thing with the unicycles is, is simply the most convenient thing in the world. Um, it, it, there's nothing there's no other transportation guys that's that is even relatively close to how convenient this is granted on a cold day or something like that it's freezing cold sleeting outside you know late at night you, you can't beat a, a car with the with the heat turned up and your heated leather seats cruising to where you got to go to get some food i understand you 100 percent. but guys for your traditional commutes in the city to where you'd maybe have to go and then pay for parking or your traditional commute where you'd have to like lock your bike up outside and then you're worrying about it. I know you are, I know you are. Don't even put in the comments that you lock it up and just feel safe with it outside the whole day and never look at it because I know you do. With these guys, you can just bring it straight into your office, wherever you're at, and just sit it under your desk. Put it right under your desk and not wor and you literally have the peace of mind of having it in sight all day. And you don't have to worry about going to check on it and make sure nobody's out there ripping your brakes off your bike or stealing a wheel off of it or worse, stealing your, your entire bike. Uh, and that's a huge thing right there in itself, guys, is just the convenience factor of it. Convenience factor and then also just the sheer um, form factor of it makes it to where you, you, 
one of the biggest liabilities with a bicycle is having it stolen and anybody that rides a bicycle is going to tell you they've had multiple ones probably stolen especially recently with, with everything going on in the world like there, there's organized rings out there that are watching people ride nice mountain bikes home and breaking into their houses to get them and whatnot and I know like it with these guys the difference in in it is there's not an entire underground market of parts and all that stuff to where these are just a a thing that thieves target as an easy buck you know it's not to that point yet where they have underground electric unicycle uh, parting out range where they're trying to sell an M super motherboard for you know at an inflated price or something like it's not like that which is super cool dude so you literally have one of the biggest problems in a modern city right now with a form of transport like a skateboard, a scooter, a bicycle, anything like that is having to lock it up. With the EUC, the form factor is so small and so convenient that that is the that is huge, man. And to overlook that, you're crazy. Or I don't have to fool with backing up out of the parking spot. I just tear out of the door at 45 miles an hour and I get in my spot dude within minutes it's crazy we race these things so we're literally racing like trying to put in lap times as soon as i bust out of that door dude i can cover miles really fast on these things faster than any a car within i'd say within a 35 minute commute i can beat any car anywhere i'd say a 35 minute commute within uh the metropolitan and city area dude i would get there 15 minutes before the car on the same route easily easily every time and have 10 times more fun doing it so it's made and it still makes my commute fun and that's the big thing about it i absolutely hate the dread of having to get up in the morning make my coffee and think about getting in the car and going to sit in traffic behind every other nimrod out there that has to be at the same place at 9 a.m it's ridiculous. I cannot stand the way society is set up where everyone has to be at the same place at the same time. I don't like that. I, I really don't. And the only way around it is to have something like this to where you can get on the bike pass, you can get on the grass, you can literally maneuver and make your own path through the world and completely avoid traffic, which is the coolest thing in the world. And it, it just makes it so much better. Because, guys, I mean, you can have the best podcast in the world, you can have the best attitude in the world. Sitting in traffic, dudes, in the morning is absolutely demoralizing. It's horrible. And if you can just blast on this thing and come into work, you know, with your hair, your take your your helmet off, and you got the, the chill on your face from the cold in the morning coming in, and you just, dude, it's better than coffee. That thing will wake you up, dude. Hitting 45 miles an hour on your EUC before you get to work, man, you'll have the biggest smile on your face and be more woken up than everybody else in there. So. That's the cool, another cool thing about it. it. It also comes down to this, guys. Another big thing I love about it, and looking at it, you might think that, hey, someone standing on something like this is just going to tear this thing up. Like, just, you know, having no suspension, the way this thing looks, it looks like it's just going to be torn up. And you're wrong, man, because these things have gotten so durable over time. The, the components, and guys, this community is hard on these manufacturers. I'm telling you what, dude, if you wanted to pick apart a manufacturer when they made a mistake, the EUC group is the one that does it, dudes. And they absolutely have, everybody has just been on any manufacturer's case that had any mistake, anything wrong, the community has attacked them and ridiculed them so hard into submission to making it right and fixing it and making the next model better. We've got just motherboards that can handle 250 pound guys jumping and landing with all their weight on the back of it. Come That would never be the case in like 2015 with a wheel like this. So like from this wheel to this wheel, it's not just range and speed. The components of the motherboard have upgraded substantially. And the, the actual MOSFETs and the capacitors, every, all the components that 
take that that force have upgraded so much just because there's gotten there, I would never expect 300 plus pound riders to be into this hobby and then complaining about a wheel that's that's um, you know uh, gonna be unsafe for a 300 pound rider and that's exactly what we have going on right now guys we have 300 pound plus guys riding these things and hitting jumps on them so that should give you a peace of mind if you're a ladder guy like me uh, I mean, these things are torture tested, legit guys. And any problems, like I said, the community hounds them and they end up fixing it. The thing guys is the community behind these things. It's awesome. If you live in a city, you have it made dudes. Like literally this thing is just buying instant friendship an instant um, community. If you live in, in a poppin city, you, it really does. You can get on these things, join your local group rides, uh, most cities have like a Wednesday night or a Thursday night group ride where you can go in the middle of the week, you know, get out there with some buddies, go cruise around at night, everybody has their lights on, their speakers playing, meet some people along the way, really, really cool. Um, it's instantly, it's like, you know, driving past somebody that has a 1962 uh, Ford Stingray or something like that, you're like, hey, you know, let's your instant friends as soon as you see it, you're like, hey, you know, now we're friends. Cool thing about unicycles too. So you see somebody on a unicycle riding around and you're on it too. It's like, hey, what's up, dude? You know, like, let's go ride. And that's another cool thing about it. I love about it. I, I love that about it too because um, with motorcycles and stuff like that, it's quite common. You wouldn't just pull up to a random motorcycle and be like, hey, man, uh, let's just go ride over some trails, ride over here. And you'd be like, dude, I'm going home to my wife. I don't. You're crazy, bro. But everybody in this community is like down to go ride, down to jump, down to learn something, down to. And that's the cool thing about these is there's so many. There's a unique style to it, and so you can learn from one another. If somebody is really good at riding backwards or throwing one-footed tricks, or if they have a, a like I'm not good at jumping and literally there's a lot of people way better at jumping these things than, than i am so i can learn a lot just by watching them by going to the to, to the jump parks with them etc and it increases my confidence and then also makes it to where i want to do that stuff and i want to learn it i can build off of it. we can you know have fun together building our skills on these things so that's that's awesome in itself i think the electric unicycle in particular over everything else over the electric scooter over the electric bike, over all that stuff, guys, over the electric skateboard, hands down. Um, and, and if you wanted me to get into it for every single device of why this is better, it would take me all day. But honestly, guys, I've rode, I got an electric skateboard over there. I've rode dirt bikes. I, I used to race dirt bikes for five years. I've rode um, electric skateboards. I've rode the nicest electric skateboards they make. Um, I rode one wheels, I rode the, the fast Chiron, um, e-bikes, and hands down, the electric unicycle uh, is the best of all of them. And it's the only thing I'd want to ride every day, by far. I wouldn't, I literally have a motorcycle. I don't ride my motorcycle near as much as this. I, I put more miles on these per week than, than a motorcycle in a year, per week on just the unicycles. And that's, um, I mean, that's crazy. And it's just because the convenience factor, guys. You're not gonna, like, especially where I live at, like if you have a garage for your motorcycle, that's, you're, I'm not talking to you. You just go outside, crank it up, and head out. I'm talking to the guys that live in the city and apartments and stuff, and don't have their own garage for their motorcycles. And you gotta lock it up, you gotta put a cover on it, and it's just a nuisance, dude, just to even be able to use your own motorcycle. But these things, you have it right by your door, charged up, dude. And it's like, hey, am I gonna walk out here? Or either I'm gonna use this. You just get to the point where you can just use this, like it's easier than walking, and you just use that, dude. You can do yard work on it, you can do chores on it, you can carry, I load and unload my car with it. It's literally, I use it for everything. I think the biggest thing is, guys, is the, the whole seven years behind it. There's nothing I've ever been into my whole life for seven years straight with this much enthusiasm. 
absolutely, and if you ask me to find something I could stick with for seven years with any enthusiasm, I would be able to tell you what it was. I'm never going to quit riding it. It's just, it's become like a part of me now. Like I literally, um, and then whenever I get a chance to plan a ride or go to a new place or go to a new location and explore with this, dudes, I can see so much of the new location. This in itself creates a whole new thing where you can just go adventure around the United States, guys. Pick a hotel somewhere. Ride up there with this, and you have a whole new vacation. Literally, you pull up there, get this out, sit down in your hotel room, you know, chill for a minute, and then go explore everything, guys. Go explore the night, go explore all around, see everything that you would never see. And you can do that everywhere. You can, Think about that endless, endless opportunity and explore where you live now and eventually we'll probably be able to take these things on airplanes. That's going to be the next big thing. As soon as we can take these on airplanes, guys, and check them in, dude, I'm going to be able to see the world on these things. I absolutely will, too. Like, the only, the only reason I don't want to travel right now is because I can't take my unicycle with me. And I, I, would, I would literally feel like I stepped back 30 years in evolution if I got to a foreign country or something and I couldn't ride this and I had to walk everywhere. It would just feel, it'd feel like I was like in slow motion. It would not even work. These are electric unicycles. If you've never heard of them before, this is just a little rundown of them, what they are. And they make ones, guys, good starter ones for about $800. The lowest end starter one I'd get is the Kingsong 14D. All the way up to like $3,600 high-end ones, guys, they go 50 plus miles an hour, up to like 55 miles an hour with like the Abrams, but, and then 100 plus miles of range, guys. So you can really get any type of device you want. So think 800 to 3,600 bucks, and within, within that range, you have um, the speed going from literally like 25 miles an hour all the way to 52 miles an hour and you can kind of pick in there how much range you want if you want suspension if you want an off-road tire if you want a 19 inch wheel a 16 inch wheel a 14 inch wheel a 10 inch wheel they make all of them and all of them are linked below guys and i have a ton of videos covering every other wheel out there so if one intrigues you then check out some of my other videos and then you can maybe get a rundown of it and then kind of get a feel for which one you might want to buy. But anyways, this is the whole world of electric unicycles. Welcome to it. And this is Pacific Northwest in a town called Wesker. Rip it, dude.
like this with the, the pedals man because one of the main things corners it was all about my acceleration out of the corners and if i could smoothly ride those corners not too fast but then hit the acceleration and use that high torque to my advantage to power out of those corners then i knew i'd have it and that's yeah yeah i was right behind you in the straightaway yeah. did you get pulled to the left too from uh wander from yeah. Yeah. yeah hell yeah bro i appreciate it man fuck because I, I saw you i was right behind you and you were getting thrown to the left yeah dude I was right behind you getting the I, same thing. I, I had to put my hand on the wheel, bro, to stop it from doing that. And I'm, I'm used to grabbing the Sherman thing, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I need yeah. to put one on that. But to try the corner, I'm grabbing for something right here, you know what I mean? Yeah, both of us was getting tugged to the left. That was bullshit, man. Did it, bro. That was intense and a lot of fun, dude. A lot of fun. Yeah.